Um, so one of the effects of this is to, of, of, of this change in capitalist time is to give a new privilege uh, to, to bigness, to share the size. It's a full pull factor in megacities. The chameleon character of institutions tends to extract value uh, from the places in which the institutions are established rather than create a regime which is installed, which controls the urban uh, 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 agglomeration as a whole where it's established, uh, which exerts authority over the city uh, as well as derives profit from it. And that's a profound change in the relationship of economic institutions to civil society. Uh, put very crudely, in uh, this uh, kind of capitalist organization, economic interests have less and less interest in the civic realm, uh, and particularly have no desire to claim authority uh, over aspects of the civil, civic realm, uh, which exclude their own immediate interests. Now, this is the problem. These create, create, we're talking about inequalities of size, and we're talking about a reformulation of economic power. So that power is divorced, if you like, from the questions of, of civic domination. And the question is, what is it that we, poor, poor us, um, as urban designers and planners, can do about this? My colleague, uh, Harry Cobb, uh, with whom I taught at Harvard uh, in, in the past, has always said to me, we can't do anything about it. Uh, we are not uh, the um, engineers of, uh, uh, of social malaise, and we can't expect to be its doctors. And I take this opportunity of having traveled 13,000 miles to conduct once again with my, with my old colleague a uh, debate that uh, I conducted with him in the past. I think we can do something. And that the Hippocratic oath that we can take, do no harm, can be executed in this regard. I want to uh, uh, suggest three ways in which this is the case. First has to do with the question of scale itself. One of the diseases of urban design, or the sicknesses of urban design uh, in the last century, was that we found that as there was an increase of scale in projects, that the projects themselves decreased in their social complexity. That is, they got larger and simpler, bigger and cruder. In the urban age, this is an issue that has come up over and over again in many different contexts. It appeared to us first when we had uh, uh, a discussion in London, for instance, about the revamping of a large uh, transport center called King's Cross, uh, in which a very large mega project did absolute violence uh, to the neighborhood in which it was uh, set. It's something that came up when we traveled to Shanghai, and our, our designer colleagues in Shanghai described the violence that's being done uh, behind the area of the Bund in Shanghai. Uh, uh, by very large-scale projects, which have simplified what was a very complex in, in environment. Um, the question that's involved here is how, uh, uh, well, I should say, when I think about this, when you have a correlation between increasing the scale of a project and decreasing complexity, one of its signal social marks is the evacuation of the people who were in the space before that uh, project. Their, their problems are complicated. It's easier to erase them, to evict them and start over in order to make something <laughs> clear than actually to address as Hippocrates uh, recommends to us uh, the, re the complexities on the ground. So what is to be done about this? I think that one way to take the Hippocratic Oath is to use complexity as a measure of quality, which 
which may seem like a rather vacuous uh, uh, formula to you. It means in particular that we use street grain as a primary measure of complexity in cities. And whenever we think about renewing, about building, the complexity of street grain becomes our first point of reference. This is an issue that our colleague Amiki Penelosa has put into practice, as I've described to us tomorrow, in trying to remake the streets of Bogota as pedestrian sites. They're more complicated than the, uh, uh, the, uh, than the streets that have existed before. The grain has become richer and more complex. And so, I would argue to you that the first way we can take this Hippocratic oath of cities is to use complexity as the measure of quality and conceive complexity in terms of complication of grain. The second way we might observe the Hippocrates oath, do no harm, deals with a, another project, that, a, a problem that we, in, uh, as designers and planners, have encountered as this mobile famine which is urban, uh, their urban age moves around the world. And it is a problem which I'm going to frame to this, since I have some little time, it just is an architectural issue. It has to do with uh, the problem of overdetermined form. Often, when we try to make a project very precise, particularly if it's a very large project, uh, we try to define in advance the relation between form and function. Uh, uh, we, 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 we try to make physical objects like buildings which perfectly suit purposes we, decide, we, we define in advance. This produces a phenomenon that I've used a very inadequate word to, to characterize in English, which is brittleness. It means that that, that objects, built objects that have this capacity, become very rigid, very inflexible. As conditions change in the city, the objects themselves prove resistance to adaptation and growth. That is, they're clear objects, but they're not sustainable. Now, one thing driving this kind of brittleness uh, is the demand made by uh, capital investment for buildings uh, which you can understand and so trade on a market. If any of you know what a right is, a real estate investment trust, their, their, their criteria for buying and selling buildings all devolve around the issue of the fit between form and function, driven by the notion that you know what you're buying or you know what you're selling. But in terms of the life of cities, this kind of fit produces something that is, uh, 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 inhibits the process of adaptation and sustainability. 